Hi and welcome to another Node Red video. This is the first of a, a series of videos on the dashboard nodes and we're going to start off with the switch node. This, switch, this is the node here, the switch node here. And we're going to start off looking at the basic properties of the switch nodes and then we're going to go on to look at some, some gotchas, what you have to be aware of when you're using the switch node. And then we're going to look at a, a couple of demos um, using the switch, switch node. Okay, let's start off with the, the basics. We're going to look at the switch properties. And to illustrate that, I've created a, a demo flow here. This is the, the flow here. And this is what it looks like on the user interface. It's a switch. And we can see the state in text format, on or off. And in visual format, this is a red light for off and a green light for on. And this is implemented using the template node. And switch it on, it goes green and it's on, switch it off, off and it's red. Now I've included this template node um, for the illustration. I'm going to talk about it a lot more in another video. It's a very, very powerful node, but you may find it useful. So I've included as part of the flow and the flow will be available for a download. Okay, so let's have a look at the switch itself. Now we have to put it in a, a group. This is the visual part of it. It's in the on the home tab in the demo one group. And you can see it home demo one. We have a size of it. We have a label uh, switch one. And sorry, we can have an optional tooltip. This will appear when I actually hover over it. And let's just put it something in there. And a default icon, which is the switch icon, which is what you see here. That switch icon here. We can change what this looks like if we want to by changing the default. So we can go for a custom icon. And if we go for a custom icon, we are using uh, material designs icons. And I've got the page here. These are what the icons look like. And I can search for a particular icon. There aren't many icons that fit the switch. Um, the radio icon is the, is the only one I found that actually resembles a switch. But to use that, I need the, the name of the icon. That's, um, there it is there. There's a toggle buttons. So this is radio button checked and radio button unchecked. And I just type that into the I just type that in here, radio button checked, unchecked, and I can have an optional color. I've chosen green and red and done. And then I deploy it. And you can see here the icons different. There's something wrong with this. Um, let's go back and have a quick look at it. I think I needed an underscore there instead of a dash. And there you can see it here. Now if I switch it on, it goes green and off it goes red. Okay, and you notice the click me appeared there as well. Let's just go back now and I'm going to put it back into default. And then we come down to here. Uh, if a message arrives on the input, pass it through to the output. So if something comes in here, we pass it on to the output. That is actually the normal setting, but there's a gotcha in, in that. So you have to be aware of it. And I'll show you in a second when we come to look at the, another flow. On payload, now I'm choosing to inject to one and a zero for off. You can use true or false, and you can use other values as well in there. And a topic, S1, we're going to use that so we actually can pick it up in a function node to know which which has generated the, uh, the payload. And we can give it a name. Now I've just typed in there main switch and you might remember back from an earlier video that we got a name here and we've got a label field here. Now the label 
field appears on the user interface there it is switch one and the name field appears here on the admin interface which you can see here now usually they are the same but you can make them different okay so that's a switch now what you'll find with switches is you need to initialize them so very often and certainly in my flows I'll have an initialization node here that basically injects a value in here for the initial state of the switch otherwise you don't know what state the switch is in when you actually initialize the flow but here we got two inject nodes we're going to inject a one or a zero which is an on or an off into the switch and it's basically the same as throwing the switch here on or off just refresh that uh, I haven't deployed it yet, that's why it's still showing those. So let's just deploy it. So if I inject a 1 in there, you can see the state changes here. And we can see we're, we're on there. And if we inject a 0, we're off there. Uh, for some reason my icon hasn't changed, probably I didn't um, I cancel it instead of pressing done I'll correct that later there, there I did so I just put that back to default and press done rather than cancel and deploy it and now we're back to a standard switch now if you've been wondering what these two nodes are here for you, this state is the actual state here which is saying off it's not saying one or zero and I've just used the change node to change the values from if the payload is a 1 I change it to on, if the payload is a 0 I change it to off. This is just so as it makes more sense on, on the display. Okay, so there's the basics of the switch node. So let's go and look at a second flow. This is a to demonstrate basically a two-way switch. Now this is a, a typical light switch that you have in, in a home where you have a light, a light switch at the bottom of the stairs and a light switch at the top of the stairs and either one of those switches can activate the light or t uh, turn it on or turn it off. Now there's no feedback on these switches so basically switch 1 can be on and switch 2 can be on but the actual light can be off so by looking at the actual switch itself you can't tell the state of the light you can only tell the state of the light by looking at the light so let me show you that uh, let me just go through it so turn switch one on the light goes on turn switch two on and the light goes off turn switch one off and the light goes on turn switch two off and the light goes off and that goes on goes off now this is a uh, a typical, as I say, two-way light switch that you find in in home. It's actually a very good video, and I'll put a link in the description below on YouTube to a video that, that uh, explains this electrically, so you can actually see how it's actually wired electrically in a typical home. But this is just a simulation, so either one of these switches can turn the light on or off. And the rules you can see here, if both of them are on, the actual thing is off, and if one of them is on then the light is on if both of them are off then the light is off now to implement that logic I've used a function node here now this function node here is purely to display the right color on the template node so it, it's doing nothing else but actually uh, choosing a color now this is where all the control is and What I use is the context object to store the switch state. So we have to know the switch state. So we have to remember what state the switch was in, switch one and switch two. So I'm using the context object to store that state. And you can see here I'm using the topic S1 and S2 for the switches. This represents switch one, this represents switch two. And if the topic switch one, then I set the switch one to the payload. If it's switch two, I set the switch two to the payload. It's quite simple. A little node.log here for debugging and this is where the logic is if if switch one and switch two then the payloads false if not switch one not switch two then the payloads false 
if switch one and not switch two is true and the opposite is true and then I set the context object again to save the state, state of the switch and I return the message and that's it that's the actual function that controls it now you'll notice there's no feedback from the function node into the switches uh, and we're going to look at that in a second in the in the final flow and when you start introducing feedback in the in the switches that's when you have to be very very careful okay so let's go on to our final flow here demo three now as i said before it's usual to initialize the switch state so you normally have an inject node here that in starts to inject when the flow starts to set up the switch in its default state you don't want to leave it without a default state because you don't know what state the switch was left in when the flow was deployed and you can also see here I've got some feedback so I've got the function node feeding out into the input of switch 3 and, and also fitting out into the input of switch 2 and I'll take you through that in, in a second and let me just go to the user interface and we'll go and see what that does now the idea of this and it's a an idea that I've actually implemented in, in real life flows you've got a, a main switch which is this one here now if this is off then nothing's working so you can't switch any of these lights on so I'm clicking here nothing's happening now if this is on then you can switch either switch 2 or switch 3 on but you can't have both of them on at the same time so if switch 2 is on you can't have switch 3 on so I'm clicking nothing's happening now if I switch 2 off then I can put 3 on and try and switch 2 on and you can't so that's the the logic I'll just put that back there and if I just take that off everything goes off so this is the main control switch once that's on then you can activate one of these but you can only activate one and not the other and to do that I need feedback from these switches and I'll show you how I've implemented that in a second there's lots of different ways of implementing it not just the way I've implemented it. so let's just look at the switches switch 1 is set up now I'm injecting 1 and 0 topic of S1 and I'm passing through the message from input, input to output on switch 1 and this is the initialization message that comes in as false and it switches everything off when I initialize the the flow now switch 2 and switch 3 are set up differently they're also sending 1 and 0 but they're not set up to send the message from the input to the output they're, they're going to display the state of the input and not the output you can option there state of the input or the output now both of them are set up this way and again they're injecting 1 and 0 and the topic on this one is S3 and the other switch is it's S2 now if I don't do this if I don't have it set up like this way if I actually tick this box here then what will happen is I'm going to get feedback and an infinite feedback and the flow is going to go incredibly slow maybe even crash so you have to be very careful when you're introducing feedback into the switch so basic logic of this is this one goes on this one sorry is off and it turns everything off and let's show you that logic in here and you can see here again I'm using the context object if S1 is undefined or S2 oh, I made a mistake there this should be S2 and S3 is correct from there then I set them all to zero variable topic is message or topic pick up the payload now I create three message objects this is for the state of switch one two and three now if the topic is s1 that means switch one then I set s1 to the payload and then I check it straight away is s1 zero if it is I set everything to zero message one two and three save the state return the messages so this will send 000 out on those three outputs and it will set all of them to zero and you can see zero goes out on here zero goes out on here and zero goes out on here and you can see here the output of this function node the second output is actually 
feeding the input of switch 2 and the third output is feeding the input of switch 3. So this is what turns them off if I've got them already on there. When I click that to off, that's what turns them all off. The zero going out there and feeding onto the input of here. Now notice that, or remember what I said, the input doesn't go to the output, otherwise I'd have off going in here, then it would go around there and it would keep keep going around in the loop. So be very careful when you're introducing feedback like this. Now the same applies for switch 3. The output 3 goes into the input of switch 3, which turns it off. There. So let's look at the rest of the logic. And So if S1 is 0, then I set everything to 0 and I just return. If not, if we're on topic 2, in other words, switch 2 is activated. Remember, with these switches, you can only activate one at a time. So it's on, the message coming in is either going to be from switch 1, switch 2, or switch 3. It's not going to be from both. So if it's switch 2, then I check if switch 3 is equal to 0. Because remember, they can't both be on at the same time. And if it is, then I can set switch 2 to the payload. If it isn't, I just set switch 2 to 0. So I, do, I basically ignore it. And by setting switch 2 to 0, I set message 2 to 0. And remember, message 2 feeds back into the input of switch 2, which will turn switch 2 back off again. So even though I switched it on, it will turn it back off again, which is why when I got it set up like this, let's do it the right way around, and I've got it set up like this, switch 3 is on, I can't switch switch to on I even though I'm clicking okay and we've got the same logic for switch 3 so if topic topic s3 then check to switch state of switch 2 if it's 0 then I can set it to the payload otherwise I set it to 0 save all of the switch states before I exit and then I set message 1 payload to s1 and s2 to message 2 and s3 to message 3 and I return them all and that's it that's the logic that drives that uh, those switches and I say those nodes over here the color and the status this is they're all template nodes here and this is simply detecting the state Let's just show you it it's detecting the state is it a 1 and if it sets the payload to lime otherwise it sets it to red Okay, I'm not going to go into the template node, I'm going to go into that in a, a separate video. Before we finish, a couple of things you need to remember and be aware of. Uh, most switches you need to initialize to make sure you know the initial state of it. If you're sending out a 1 and, and a 0 here, then it's important that when you feed into the switch, which you are with this inject node here, you also fit feed in a 1 or a 0. Now if you feed in a true or a false then it won't work properly. So make sure what you're sending into the switch is what the switch is actually sending out. Now it doesn't really matter whether you use true or false or 1 or 0 but I prefer 1 and 0. Also be very careful the normal switch state is this message arrives on the input passes through to the output. Be very careful with this when you're applying feedback to the switch as I am here uh, you might finish up with a, an infinite loop. Okay uh, that brings us to the end of the video um, if you've got any comments then please leave them below if you like the video then use the like button below and if you want to get notified of uh, new videos on the channel then you can always subscribe until next time goodbye